You are listening to the Do Something More podcast, and this is episode 28, Never Suppress a Generous Thought. Welcome to the Do Something More podcast, a service-oriented show where we highlight the helpers who inspire us all to do something more. I'm your host, Melissa Draper. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to another episode of the podcast, and it's going to be a little shorter one today. I just want to share a story, the story behind a quote that I shared a few weeks ago in the podcast episode from Camilla Kimball, Never Suppress a Generous Thought. So I want to share the small story behind that because I love that quote and it's fun to hear the stories behind those types of things. Uh, But before that, I would just like to give another reminder that if you have been enjoying this podcast, please go and leave us a review, follow us, or follow us on social media. We're on Instagram at do something more dot podcast or on Facebook at the do something more podcast. And you can see all the updates for episodes there as well as some other fun insights that I give for each show. So, well, as I said, a few weeks ago, I shared the quote, never suppress a generous thought. And I love that idea. I love that quote, the idea that the good things that come to our minds that we feel inspired to do, we can act on them. And we don't need to worry about if they're good enough or if they make sense, that if they feel right, if they feel good, we can act on them and be encouraged that many times they will make a difference and be good for those that we've felt inspired to help. So the story behind this quote was actually told in a devotional given at BYU back in 2007. So this quote comes and this story comes from my church. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So if you're a listener that's a member of that too, some of this might be familiar. But if you're not, I still wanted to share the story because I think it's really neat. So Camilla Kimball, who uh, is the author of this quote, was the wife of President Spencer W. Kimball. So he was the head of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the president, from December 1973 to November 1985. And uh, the members of the church refer to them as the president and the prophet. They believe that they're a prophet of God. So She was his wife, and this story comes from a woman who lived in their ward, which is what our church calls kind of your neighborhood congregation and her experience. So as I said, Bonnie D. Parkin told this story in a devotional, so I'm just taking a few of these words from her and that devotional. And the woman that lived in their ward in their neighborhood, her name was Susan. And she said, Susan was a wonderful seamstress. One Sunday, Susan noticed that President Kimball had a new suit because he was part of their church congregation. Her father had recently returned from a trip to New York and had brought her some exquisite silk fabric. Susan thought that fabric would make a handsome tie to go with President Kimball's new suit. So on Monday, she made the tie. She wrapped it in tissue paper and walked up the block to President Kimball's home. On her way to the front door, she suddenly stopped and thought, Who am I to make a tie for the prophet? He probably has plenty of them. Deciding she had made a mistake, she turned to leave. Just then, Sister Kimball opened the door, that's Camilla Kimball, and said, Oh, Susan. Stumbling all over herself, Susan said, I saw President Kimball in his new suit on Sunday. Dad just brought me some silk from New York, and so I made him a tie. 
Before Susan could continue, Camilla Kimball stopped her, took hold of her shoulders and said, Susan, never suppress a generous thought. And I just, I love that story. It's so simple. And again, anyone could say, yeah, he probably has plenty of ties. But she had had this thought and she didn't do it because she wanted to impress someone or make a huge deal out of it. She just did it because it felt right. It felt like the perfect thing to do with that beautiful fabric that she'd received. And so she did it and she made the tie and delivered it and then was able to deliver it even with those misgivings that she had. So I love that story. I love that quote, just as a gentle reminder that it is okay to do something just because it feels like the right and good thing to do. And that so many times we stop ourselves from doing those things because of our own insecurities or because of the feeling that we can't really make a difference or maybe it's not really needed. Um, But the honest truth is that most times it is. So take that inspiration. Don't suppress those generous thoughts, those simple thoughts for good that you have. Act on them. Find a way that you can follow through and act on them. I was impressed with that story too because she did it just the next day. I'm not always that quick with the good thoughts I have. As I shared in my episode a few weeks ago, I have to write them down many times um, in the busy life that I'm living so that I don't forget them. And sometimes it will take me weeks or months to go back and act on them. But I've learned that even then it's good and it can make a difference. So I love that story too because of how quickly she acted on that thought that she had. And we've shared so many stories here on the podcast as well of individuals that have acted on those thoughts that they've had and been able to do and create good in their own way. So there's a story to inspire you, some words to inspire you, and hopefully help you see how you can make a difference by not suppressing the generous thoughts that come to your mind. So thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time.